Okay, just wanted to do a quick video here on solar hot water tips and tricks. This is a very short video on having to do with antifreeze. Yeah, it is supposed to run in the lines. Now, one thing I learned very quickly was that you're, they tell you to run 50-50 antifreeze uh, in the lines, which is propylene glycol and uh, preferably distilled water. However, it doesn't work. Tell you why. So <clears throat> here's the stuff that I got. Protects systems as low as minus a hundred. Well, that might be true, except for the fact that online it says, well, you're supposed to mix this stuff, which is propylene glycol, not uh, not ethylene glycol, this is propylene glycol. It's supposed to mix this 50-50 and you'll notice that I did that, I marked it. The only problem is 50-50 mix is pumpable down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's no good. It's not good enough. Very simply, it doesn't cut it. You, especially here in New England, you absolutely need a more like a 75-25 mix. So 75% propylene glycol to 25% uh, water. And the reason is because pumpable down to zero uh, is great until you have a below zero day. Especially here in New England, we have at least plenty of those some winters. So here's what we're going to do. We run 75-25 mix. Don't have as much of a problem. Okay, second tip, two, uh, is how I uh, charge the system uh, with uh, uh, with antifreeze. So the first thing you do is uh, you can use a pump of some kind to get uh, fluid into the system, but if you want to add pressure to it, usually a pump won't uh, won't do it necessarily. So what I use uh, to top off a system is this thing. This is actually an old-fashioned uh, soda acid fire extinguisher. And what I have here is I have it modified with all kinds of fun stuff so that uh, <clears throat> you can add pressure to a system. So let me show you really quickly what I did <clears throat> and actually what this is. I've got some liquid in here right now Real simple, uh, this system uh, has pressure inside the tank, you add pressure with um, air here, and then there's a dipstick down from here, it goes all the way down inside the tank. Let me unscrew this. Here's the dipstick. So this dipstick goes all the way down into the antifreeze down in there, or fluid of any kind. You, you can do this with any type of fluid, but antifreeze is for solar hot water. So you screw this back on, and now what happens is pressure, or rather air that's in this part of the tank, pushes liquid down and then up the dipstick. So then pressure wants to come up and out that's good. So what I've got, I've got a valve here. This this allows me to refill it without um, unscrewing this. This doesn't work that good, so we don't worry about that. It was not the best of ideas. You really need to unscrew it to refill it. So you can basically do without that part. So what I do have here is a T with a pressure gauge, pretty simple, uh, and then uh, a valve and I have garden hose sticking out the top. So we got all these fun, these adapters are actually pretty nice. Goes from, I guess this is either three quarter or half inch, I don't remember, um, to the garden hose adapter. Gender bender on the garden hose, and then, then that goes 
all the way up over to there's my fill point right there so and there's my circulator my solar hot water circulator pump and I'm going to cover all this other stuff how I did all this in another video but just wanted to go over really quickly this unit which I think is really handy for adding extra pressure to the system you know you can get it to, to zero pounds with a with a regular with the regular circulator you can actually get that you know, let's show you this circulator up here if you actually hook up uh, a line and prime it properly you can get the circulator to sort of suck up some of the fluid the problem is the circulator is not is not really a pump it's just a circulator so it's not going to suck pressure unless it's primed properly so you can get zero pounds essentially in the lines and get it more or less full but if you want it up to say oh where do we have it today here come on autofocus there you go uh, so 25 pounds approximately so we get 25 pounds of pressure in the lines and so if you want it up to 25 30 pounds which is probably where which is usually where I like to run it then you need something like this to add pressure that's my opinion it's worked great for me so uh, and now I haven't touched it in many years so it's 2013 now and you can also see when I first charged it was 109 so January 2009 so I've had this running for many years now okay there you have it that's it for, for today Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.